Hello from my kitchen. Um, it's Ryan, if you guys don't know me, and I am currently set up in a light, nice little makeshift space uh, in my kitchen. Um, weirdly enough, my coffee table for my living room is covered in canvas, so um, it is now my work table. And I managed to grab a few things from the studio before full lockdown. So I'm here to kind of go over some surface design stuff and do some exploration. Um, I think it probably goes without saying that I'm not working out of like a fully equipped space right now. Uh, I don't have a banding wheel, I don't have anything of that sort, so we're gonna see how this all works out. Um, I did grab some colored slips from the studio. Right now I just have a black and a like a light gray. Um, so I'm just gonna do some playing with value in that regard. Uh, the piece that I have is something I trimmed last week and managed to wrap well enough. Uh, I personally prefer to do my surface design when clay is at this stage, um, a stage we often call chocolate at the studio, um, in that it kind of has that look uh, where it's getting a little powdery, like if you ever put a chocolate bar in the freezer and, um, and when you get it out it has that sort of powdery co coating on it. Um, I like to work at this stage where um, the pieces aren't completely bone dry, so they're a little less delicate as they would be if they were bone dry, but um, the way that I like to work with slips, if I would do that on a piece that is leather hard, um, I don't always get the results that I want. Um, I like that at this stage the water from the slip gets absorbed very quickly into the piece and they tend to adhere very nicely but because of the type of texture that I'm looking for having that little bit of disparity is helpful. Um, so I'm going to start with the black clay now or the black slip I should say. Uh, now when when I am using this I'm using it as a base coat um, then what I often like to do is thin it out a little bit. Um, so for instance if I wanted to say maybe make the inside of this all just black um, I'm going to add a little bit of water and when I say a little bit, um, usually it's enough like if I just get the paintbrush wet and then add a little bit more water to the surface, then that's enough um, enough water. I don't want to add so much water that I'm losing the ratio of sort of like pigment to substance and then at that point everything kind of gets a little streaky. Um, I'll also mention that Jim is here and if you hear that little yelp in the background, that's him. Um, so I'm gonna start with, again, just, I'm gonna start just by inside of this piece completely black as a way of sort of just um, finishing it off because the idea here being is that this piece is something I could just clear slip or clear glaze and not have to worry about um, on that stage at all. Um, so I'm gonna start just with a slightly thinner coat. And again, I don't have a banding wheel, so I'm just going to coat this um, as best I can. All right, so again, just kind of thinning this out a little bit for a base coat, adding just a tiny bit of water, and then getting a nice, even coat on the inside here. Um, I also find, especially on the inside of a piece, using thinner coats and more of them can be useful so that you don't get that sort of pinhole look with, with slip, sometimes because the inside of your piece might have a little bit more texture then the outside, like the throw rings are a little, can be a little bit more pronounced. Um, you get sort of a pinholing in the slip and you want a nice, even solid coat that's gonna make sure your piece stays nice and food safe, right? Yeah, you can kind of see how quickly this dries, especially when you're working in sunlight. So, um, just trying to like I said, start with a nice, even coat. Hi, Jim. I'm gonna just get along the edge. Um, I walked these pieces home in a grocery cart, so the edges got a little banged up. Um, Transporting greenware is always a little risky. Um, doing so in one of those rolling grocery carts. I refer to them as gra grandma carts, mostly because my grandmother bought me my first one. Um, is challenging, right? So here we are. All right. 
So yeah, right now I'm just going in and trying to make sure that everything, I said none of those little pinholes are there, that everything has a nice even coat of color. And then I'm gonna chill and let that dry. And I'll work on the outside a bit. Okay, so that um, now that that inside layer is nice and dry, um, I'm actually gonna work on the outside from the other direction. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, actually my lightest values and kind of work back towards my darkest from the bottom to the top to create sort of like a seamless look here. Um, so right now I have just the um, the the gray the light gray slip all by itself that I've again thinned out a little bit so that it goes on a little smoother. Um, and I'm going to just start with the bottom here, um, give that a nice coat. Uh, as someone who does use clear glaze as a base for a lot of my work, I do like to, and I also don't like to put feet in my work, I tend to slip the bottom of a lot of pieces just to make them look a little bit more finished. Um, just to add a little color, a little bit of visual interest somewhere where otherwise it would be very flat. Um, so I'm going to start again just by coating the bottom. Um, again, no banding wheels, so just doing what I can with what I got. Um, and then I'm going to be a little generous with this, knowing that I'm going to be painting over it with different colors. Um, I just want to make sure that I have the whole piece covered. So I'm going to go a little bit lower than I think I need to with the with this lightest color of slip that I have. Um, and especially because this one is... Um, the actual just like texture of this slip, the water content's a little different. Um, I am going to do a second coat, so I'm going to let that dry and then come back and do another one. Okay, so changing angles for a second, if for no other reason than so you can see a little better. Um, I'm making sort of my mid-range value right now. Um, I'm using a palette knife to mix basically the light color and the dark color slip together to create sort of a medium gray. Um, and I'm doing so with a palette knife, one, because it's something I have here, and two, um, because the technique that I like to use, I need that slip to be sort of in this consistency. Um, and for external surface design of something like a bowl, um, I actually kind of like it when there's a little bit of air folded in, so this kind of helps with that. Um, so I'm just sort of mixing these together until the color feels a little bit more consistent, although it definitely doesn't need to. If you don't mind that sort of swirly look, you could certainly do this with different varying um, levels of uh, cons like uniformity in the color consistency. Also, this is just kind of fun to do, so. Okay, so now that this is dry to the touch, right? Um, no stickiness, no leaving fingerprints anymore. Um, I'm gonna start getting into the, um, the actual application. Now again, I'm kind of working upside down here. So this next layer is gonna kind of be added here. And I'm gonna actually still use that palette knife because I like that sort of spackled look to it. Um, although I might use a different one. So I have this one. Um, a rubber rib is usually what I use for this, one that's like a sort of medium stiffness. Uh, but I don't have any here, so this is what I'm gonna use. Um, thankfully I have some painting supplies as well as um, clay stuff. Uh, so, so I don't know how well you can see this, but I'm just gonna start by sort of adding it and then sort of smearing and like I said I like when there's just a, a few tiny air bubbles in there um, which just help add a little bit of texture and um, kind of visual interest to the work now because of this technique I am adding kind of a lot of slip to these pieces um, I do try to throw my work on the thinner side um, because it is going to add weight and it is going to add sort of bulk to the surface of what you're working on. So having a little bit of um, 
where it's not super heavy to begin with is useful in terms of just pure functionality here. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna kind of keep working this color around this sort of mid-range. Um, again, I always start, and this is very common in my work if you are familiar with my teaching. Um, you can always take off later, so I always try to start with more than I need and kind of I'm fairly generous with how um, how much I add, knowing that I can always kind of pull back afterwards. Um, if you've ever like, I don't know, patched drywall or anything of that sort, it's a very similar sort of application technique and that I'm gonna add a bunch and then I'm going to kind of scrape it off later. Um, so I'm gonna start with just one kind of coat that way and since I that bottom is dry I'm gonna set it down because my hands starting to get tired uh, and then I'm gonna go in kind of take as much of the color or actual physical clay off of that palette knife um, and I'm gonna go back in and sort of remove some of this excess so just going in taking that off yep. That's going to help that transition layer where I go in with the slightly darker color. And um, and then I am going to come in and kind of take some of this off of, off of here just to make it a little smoother um, and add a little bit of texture. There is something nice once it's on the pot and the pot itself is removing some of the water from that slip it's going to get a little bit thicker and then I can come in and really kind of add that texture that I wanted to add so um, again just kind of coming in here and adding a little bit more um, sort of having it almost feel like plaster or, um, again, like anytime you paint with a palette knife, that sort of look, um, and just kind of adding that texture. Now this layer is going to take a lot longer to dry because of the sheer volume of, of slip that I'm adding. Um, so hopefully the light isn't too terrible when it's done and I'll come in um, and add that, uh, add that last little bit um, at the end. Okay, I think everything's said dry enough that I can go in with my, my with my last color, um, which is just the black again. Um, and so again, I'm gonna start with that palette knife, um, and I grabbed some fresh slip because again, I want it to be a little bit thicker in consistency than the thinned out stuff that I use to paint the inside. Um, and to be perfectly honest, I'm actually really enjoying this. I, this might become something that I take to the studio, this particular palette knife. Um, so again, I'm basically just gonna do another coat um, on this bottom part here of this slightly darker color um, and just go in and do the exact same thing. So kind of creating some, some interest here and being a little bit more careful, a little bit more delicate around the rim just because things can get um, fragile. And I still wanna make sure that it feels functional as a bowl. So I wanna make sure that um, I'm not creating anything too jagged or um, unusable in that regard. Though I will be cleaning this up a little bit um, and sh later. So again, just trying to kind of make sure that everywhere I want there to be color, it has color, but also that that texture is still intact. Um, and you can kind of see that this, this color, I know the, the values aren't as obvious on camera, um, this color slip is a little bit thinner, like it's not as um, viscous as the other one, as that sort of medium that I had, um, but I'm actually cool with that because I'm going to get some slight variation in texture as well as variation in color, so that should help um, just make the piece a little bit snazzier, I think is the technical term. Um, so again, I'm just going to kind of come in here and uh, with a palette knife, you do want to be, or let's say if you if you were doing this with a rib, 
I want to make sure that I'm a little bit more careful um, in terms of pressure because if I push too hard, I'm just going to scrape all of the color off. Now that's also a look you can go for, um, but I'm just going to sort of create this sort of textured look, kind of work all the way around again. And, and you can kind of see where, what I mean by like the adding volume and adding um, just sort of a, a heft to this piece that wouldn't necessarily be there otherwise um, because of the, just like the thickness of that slip. So, which is why I said starting with a piece that's a little on the thinner side anyway is useful. Um, and also considering things like um, I'm putting this on the part of the piece that's naturally thinner. The part, um, the base kind of is always gonna have a little bit more heft as it is, um, unless I purposely went in and trimmed a lot of that out, uh, which I didn't for this, because it's a mixing bowl. Um, and just making sure that, so like kind of strategically planning, even if you're the type of person who's still kind of throwing your rims a little thin, um, this can be a way to sort of even out that continuity or something that you can play with being confident that that rim can sort of hold that, that heft. Um, although also something to consider being that if, if this is too thin, adding all of this bulk will again, like rehydrate it to a point where it's not really stable and you can make your piece not round anymore. Um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, so, you know, just kind of adding that last layer of spackle, that last sort of textured, um, textured stuff going on, right? a little bit weird around the spout, but we'll make it work. Right. Perfect. Now I'm just going in and checking, making sure I didn't miss any spots or scrape it too far where I have that original clay coming through or that light value. Right. Uh, and then I am going to go in again with a paintbrush, with that fan brush, right? I'm going to make sure that it's nice and clean um, and a little bit of that sort of thinner, thinner black slip. Um, and I'm just going to use it to, again, sort of soften up these edges and make sure that I haven't lost, like I said, I want to take extra care in that little spout and just kind of making sure that I'm not creating something that's going to be sort of unpleasant around that rim. Okay. Um, and you kind of see where um, it's, there's definitely some like water, waterier parts on the, uh, um, on the inside. Um, so I'm actually, now that this is kind of set up just for the sake of security, I'm um, going to go in and add one more really thin coat of color to the inside just to make sure that everything's uh, nice and saturated and that that inside color is really, really opaque. Um, I've definitely done this before where I kind of didn't go back in and do one last coat on the inside of a bowl and lo and behold, get it out of the kiln and you can see brush strokes. Um, and I guess on the inside of the bowl isn't the worst place in the world, but you know, if you're just trying to go for that really deep color, um, deep solid color, it's just, you know, it doesn't hurt to do one more nice and thin coat. Right, and then now once this is a little bit more set up, um, as you can kind of see here, um, there's definitely a lot of texture on that. Um, I will go in and just kind of soften with my finger anything that might feel a little sharp once it's fired. Um, but right now everything's still a little too tacky to do that, but you can kind of see like these little, these little nubbins, things like that there. Um, I'm gonna go in and soften those out when it's a little bit more set up. And, um, and then there you have it. This is a nice sort of grayscale, textury look that you can add to your pieces if you'd like. Um, I unfortunately won't be able to fire it for the foreseeable future. I don't know when that next fire or when I can get to the studio again is, but 
Um, in the meantime, I, I know myself and a few other instructors are trying to get some content together, so hopefully we'll all see you soon. Thanks so much.